Hello Commanders, now that we're well into Polaris Light and that some of the first high scores for this ranking have come in, I spoke about what teams could be used to kill the death stacks in my last video. So now I'd like to update that as well as make this video explaining how you can go about fighting the death stacks in Polaris Light ranking map 1, Labyrinthine Defense. Now before I discuss the updated teams and the specifics of each of the death stack fights, I'd like to go over the main mechanics this map provides you in combating these death stacks in order to make the fights possible, or at least a little bit easier. So, first on, firstly, in the bottom left corner of the spawn area, there is an abandoned goliath. Now you can pick up this bean and move it to a node on the map, place it on the node, and it'll act as a mine for the next two turns. At the start of your next, at the start of your turn, if an enemy has walked on the, walked on the node that has a goliath mine, it will deal damage equal to 90% of their HP, meaning that if an enemy steps on this mine, they have basically no HP left and they're very easy to kill. Then in the middle bottom section of the spawn area, there's the EMP grenade. You can similarly take this with a team, except now you move adjacent, you move to a node adjacent to an enemy, and you can toss the EMP at that enemy. This will stun them for a turn, so they won't be able to, though they won't move at the end of your turn and it will reduce their damage, rate of fire, accuracy, armor, and evasion of all units within that, en within that enemy echelon by 90%. However, this won't reduce typh the Typhon laser damage. The Goliath Bomb and the EMP respawn on their respective towers at the start of each turn, which means you get 8 total of each. However, with how the scoring to this ranking has unfortunately changed from 10% of max combat effectiveness to 10% of current combat effectiveness, if you're trying to go for a top or high score, you cannot use the Goliath Bombs at all and must solely re rely on the EMPs. Similarly, Landmine Fairy cannot be used if you're trying for a top or high score as well, which is why Sue or Construction is now recommended. Now, onto the death stacks themselves. There are 8 different types of death stacks for a combined total of 15 on the map. Five of these death stacks do not have any Typhons, which are the KCCO laser tanks, and they are the easier fights because of that. These fights are one 309k Hydra stack here, two 307k Hydra Minotaurus stacks found here and here, one 304k Minot Hydra Minotaurus stack with dactyls found here, and one 303k Hydra Minotaur stack with Orthrus, or the Doggos, found here. The 303k with Doggos is the most difficult in this set, but depending on the teams you're using, these fights can all be dealt with only using AT4, 2B, and N2 as Hawk support without using an EMP. Then, the remaining 10 dust stacks all have Typhons in them, and, are, and they very widely vary in difficulty. They are two 313k Typhon stacks found here and here. These are the easiest Typhon fights because they only have two Typhons and can be done without EMP. Then there is two 301k triple Typhon stacks found here and here. Of the three triple Typhon stacks, this one is the easiest and can be done without an EMP. Uh, now we're getting into the really hard fights here. There is three 303k triple typhon stacks with dactyls found here, here, and here. This is where EMP start to be necessary to fight at all. Uh, lastly, there is three 312k triple typhon death stacks with doggos found here, here, and here. This one is by far the most difficult and you absolutely need EMP uh, to fight this. Before I look into the specific fights here is some general advice. If you don't really care about or are not trying to go for a top score or a high score and just want the base reward, Goliath, the 312k, and the 303k Typhon death stacks, and then EMP and kill the others as you need to. You will take a fairly large point loss, but you will significantly save your time and sanity in not having to reset these fights, as some of them can take a long time to get right. Now, before I break down each of the fights, you might be asking, but Triskidicus, what team should I use? You didn't really give us a solid answer in your last video. Well, now I can safely say, after completing my test run, you definitely want a rifle handgun team for the Dustox if you're able to field one over an MG handgun team. Here's the team that I used during my test run, 
And although it was very painful in terms of affection loss because the death stacks don't count as bosses, and so if any of your handguns die, as some of the fights it's nearly impossible to retreat your handguns before dying when you're cutting them, uh, then you will lose affection. And uh, unfortunately you will lose a lot. Uh, but I specifically used this team because I tested and used this comp as it was able to kill all the death stacks without having to change the comp at all. However, there are other options available, um, such as one of the other main teams that you could use. Also, it could include uh, Case VK instead. This would be known as the Pew Pew Bang Bang team. Um, but the reason I didn't use end up using Case VK mod in my team is because she's very, very good at some of the fights, such as the 309k Hydra Death Stack fight. But she's very bad at some of the other fights that have Doggos or Minotaurus, as she's she can't really kill them easily and uh, they block her shots as well which is why i put great ben for the delete skill um, another team that was used during the esports event to fight the dustax was this team with r93 um, and webley with a beach fairy uh, this was used during the esports event by uh, s several of the competitors and it does work but if you're more much more reliant on emps for many of the fights uh, then a korean commander playing on an en account for the ranking uh, that i was talking to uh, did the ranking with this team um, with hanyang here except he had a three star warrior fairy and was able to kill the 312k um, death stack fight with only EMP and Hawks, which I have a clip of later. So overall, I would seriously recommend using a rifle handgun team if you're able to. However, if you don't really care for top scores or high scores, um, you can still use an, a machine gun handgun team like the old servers did, such as uh, this team with a beach fairy, or like I said in my last video, um, but you were much, much more reliant on um, the Goliaths and the EMPs, as this team can't reliably kill things without them being um, reduced in some way. So please see my previous video for more variations on this specific team that you could use. Now let's discuss the specifics of each fight. In general, however, you will need to have the following if you want to fight the Dustax. A good team, preferably a handgun rifle team, all your hawks in range and your hawks being leveled and raised and all that. Any buff such as construction or sue if you need it for that fight. A debuff such as EMP if you need it for that fight. A good emulator. I would also recommend having the .obb fix for less lag as these death stacks can be very laggy sometimes and having let some way to lower the lag does help with kiting. A lot of time as a uh, <laughs> Some of these fights need many resets, so in with, with that you need a very, very large amount of patience, as these fights can take a long time to get right. I will be providing examples of all the fights, uh, and I'll demonstrate them through my team as I used in the ranking. So first starting, starting with the non-Typhon death stacks, we have the 309k Hydra fight. This fight is pretty straightforward and can be done with only three hawks and no other buffs or debuffs. The main thing is just to kite and stall the hydras as long as possible. If you're very careful and reset this fight a lot, it can be done with my team without taking any damage on the handguns, but I just wanted to record this quickly so I just took the, the first one I was happy with. Next is the 307k Minotaurus Hydra stack. This one is a bit more complex as you have to juggle staggering the Hydras while blocking the Minotaurus from getting in range of tasering your rifles because they can, if you have a, a handgun on two and you have rifle on one, the 
Minotaurus can still taser through the handgun and hit your rifle. So you have to be careful about that. And then taking damage here is unavoidable on about two handguns, but if you get good RNG, you can keep someone such as Stetchkin here at full HP. There are other ways to kite this, but this method that I'm showing here is the most straightforward. Then next is the 304k Minotaurus Hydra stack. This one is a bit stranger and arguably a bit easier in a sense because the dactyls, mainly because of the dactyls. You just want to make sure that the top and bottom dactyl die before they reach your rifles, but otherwise it's fairly straightforward. Uh, you just have to make sure that the top Minotaurus doesn't taser your rifle, such as the same reason for the other one. I would also like to quickly note that if a dactyl does walk up and plant a mine where your rifle is, that is okay as long as you don't move your rifle because the dactyl mines only go off if a unit walks on top of or off of one of the mines. Next is the last and hardest non-Typhon death stack with the 303k doggo stack. This one is pretty hard as you have to deal with doggos, then a wave of hydros followed by some minotaurus, which make kiting pretty challenging, as this can also be the laggiest non-typhoon death stack, which doesn't really help. But basically, once the doggos run in, just ignore them and focus on kiting the hydros behind them, as you need all of them to die first, then the minotaurus, and then you kill the doggos last. Hydros have an AoE sweeping grenade ability, so if they don't die, when they walk up to your handgun that's taking the doggos on 5, then they'll sweep across the mid in between um, the fir or in between one and two in terms of columns, and they'll hit your rifles. This fight can be done with having much higher HP on the handguns, but there's a lot of RNG involved in that, and either way, you'll have to repair them afterwards, as taking damage here is unavoidable. Now onto the Typhon Deathstock teams. The easy Typhons are pretty easy, but the hard Typhons are very, very hard. So there's a wide range of difficulties in these fights as they really ramp up to much, much, much harder. Uh, and overall, they're much harder than the non-Typhon Deathstock. So starting with the easiest, we have the 313k double Typhon stack. Thankfully, the two Typhons in this fight are on the top and bottom row, leaving the middle row open, which is great for Hanyang lasers. Now, the bottom Typhon should die very quickly, which means you don't have to move your rifles on move your rifle on position 1. If it doesn't, you can try to put your rifles on 4 and 5, or try using Construction or Sue buff for a bit of extra damage as well, or using an additional uh, Hawk such as AGS if you really need to. This one can take some time as there's a bunch of RNG for targeting, and it can lag pretty badly sometimes, so you need to have some patience for this fight. But the fight I'm showing here is basically the hardest version of that fight. Next is the first triple Typhon fight, the 301k stack. Now this version that I'm showing here is, has 4 Hawk support and a Sway buff on the team, but using EMP will make the fight much much easier if you need it. I used a battle simulator for this fight to make things easier to test, you can find the info about that in my Discord and I'll probably make a video about that eventually. But for this fight, the bottom Typhon will die right away, so move your rifles there and focus on kiting the lasers and the hydros with your handguns back and forth between the, uh, the top and middle row. I wasn't using my norm normal emulator for this, so it's much laggier than... so it seems much laggier than the fight normally is. Um, but it is... you can also do it without taking damage on your rifles and having more HP on your handguns. Either, for, either way, this fight just takes a bit of practice and is overall pretty straightforward. Um, but if you need to use an EMP, it'll make it much, much easier and you'll take less damage. Next is the second hardest death stack with the 303k Typhon fight. This fight has dactyls, which are really annoying because the positioning and kiting required can take a link off your rifles very early, which lowers your DPS and makes the fight harder. I use Sue and 4 Hawks here for this fight, as well as EMP, 
I would say it is possible to do it without EMP, as I almost did it during my run, but it's just not worth it. Don't 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 bother. Just use an EMP or Goliath if you need to. Um, it is possible to do this fight without any handguns dying, but you have to be very fast in retreating. And the only reason I wasn't able to was because the fight was lagging when I recorded it, um, which makes things a bit a bit difficult. There is a lot of RNG on this fight, so be prepared to reset a lot if you need to until you get something kind of similar to mine. Then lastly, the hardest death stack is the 312k Typhons that has the doggos as well for some lovely reason. It has a kiting method similar to the 303k Typhon fight, except losing at least two handguns is nearly unavoidable unfortunately, Through though with the right RNG you can do this without taking as much damage on the rifles. Um, so like the last fight, just, prepare, just be prepared to reset a whole lot as any little mishap from the from bad targeting to messing up kiting will just completely ruin the fight. I would also like to mention that um, I didn't realize this until recording now, but I had a construction node on this for this fight. But the way construction works actually means that my team didn't get buffed by the construction. So this, I basically did this fight with only Hawks and EMP. If you actually do set up properly with construction or Actually, no, you cannot set it up properly with construction. If you prop set it up properly with Sue, then this will make will make the fight easier. On the topic of the 312k Typhon fight, one of the teams, one of the team comps I mentioned before is the 3-star warrior fairy can be used to kill this death stack, death stack though it's even more painful. Um, I have a clip here from the Korean guy who was talk to, uh, I was talking to who goes by Udon, uh, successfully killing the 312k with only 4 hawks and EMP, he did not use construction or sue. Um, I would also like to note that this took him many hours to actually get the fight properly of resetting, so I would not recommend it. In terms of the MG teams, the reason why I would recommend avoiding them is because without the usage of Goliath Bombs or Landmine Fairy, the Dustocks have too much HP to kill, which means you'll take a lot of damage during the reload, and since we can't use Goliath, MG teams cannot kill any of the Dustocks reliably without at least EMP. 
but we don't have enough EMPs for all the Destocks, so we need rifles to kill some of the Destocks without EMP. Um, which is why one of the reason, main reasons why I would recommend a rifle team over an MG team. That's not to say that you can't use them, but it's just dependent on what score you're aiming for, what your strategy is, and what you have in your armory. But if you aren't sure, please ask, leave a comment below, or come by my stream, or come join my Discord and ask. I'm usually always available on Discord, all of which are linked in the description. Now, like I said before, if you don't want to suffer through some of these fights, just Goliath, the 3 to 3 Ks, and, and the 3 to 12 K Typhon fights, and use the, MP, you, use the MPs on the others. Otherwise, good luck, commanders.